Our top story today, Alex Jones is in tears as the feds try to seize his studio and shut down InfoWars for good. We're talking about this story and so much more here on the Gateway Pundits Week in Review. My name is Elijah Schaefer and our top story today from the Gateway Pundit, feds attempt to shut down InfoWars tonight. Alex Jones broke down in tears. The story is ongoing as the federal government is seeking to take out InfoWars ahead of the election, and they're trying to blame these sham lawsuits. As reported earlier, Alex Jones, the host and founder of InfoWars, claims during a live emergency broadcast Saturday that the federal government is orchestrating a forceful takeover of his broadcasting studios. According to Jones, federal agents could put locks on the doors and liquidate all broadcasting assets Jones alleges that he even spent the night in the studio and is prepared to involve local law enforcement to prevent what he describes as an unlawful raid on his property. In a video posted Friday with the caption, Breaking Infowars may be shut down in 48 hours, Jones said the deep state thinks that they're taking down Trump, and hours after they have their false conviction, they're making their move to shut down Infowars right now. Despite me thinking that men shouldn't cry on camera, I get it, and I love this guy. Alex is a good friend of mine. Here he is breaking down. Listen. At the end of the day, we're going to beat these people. <laughs> I'm not trying to be dramatic here, but it's been a hard fight. And these people hate our children. <sighs> Just take more calls. Go ahead. There's an expert. At the end of the day, we're wow. going to beat these people. <laughs> That's really hard to see a man break down like that. You know when someone's breaking down like that, especially someone with the high testosterone, the will to fight as as Alex. He's under a lot of pressure, man, and we hope he gets well, and we're going to continue to fight alongside him. We support him entirely in the fight against the corruption. As many people are not willing to to put up a fight that he is, and I would want to say more on that, but we've got to get our next story today which is that Tim Pool abruptly ended the live stream as Laura Loomer calls for treason charges and death penalty for Democrats accused of a coup against Donald Trump. Now, this connects to the last story. Listen to this. Jim Hoff reports this directly. Here they are there. Tim Pool hosted the YouTube show, TimCast IRL, abruptly ended his live stream on Friday, according to the website. This unexpected termination occurred as Laura Loomer advocated for the execution of Democrats, whom she accuses of orchestrating a coup against Trump following his conviction in a recent bogus hush money trial. During the show, Loomer passionately voiced her frustrations with the political forces aligned against Trump, calling for stark actions against these traitors. Wake up. Stop being nice to these people, Loomer said. I don't give a shit about the people, their livelihood, their well-being, the well-being of their families, their little kids. I don't give a shit. And that's the mentality that everybody needs to have now in this country because it's a war. It is war. She goes on to say here directly that Poole echoed Loomer's sentiments, asserting that there is no question if Trump were reelected, he should start locking Democrats up. Should there be lists of Democrats who need to go to jail? 100%, Poole said. And the reason for that is they committed crimes. And the reason we can put them on trial is to show the whole world that we will uncover what you've done. We'll make sure that everyone knows and you will be held accountable for it. Not just jail. They should get the death penalty, Loomer said, in which the show was cut. Well, I don't know if it's wrong to call for the the, the death penalty. I think that's a total fun. I think you can't call for violence, but state-sponsored violence in terms of calling for the state to declare war or the state to to uh, somehow you know call for 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 the death penalty. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but I could get why he's taking precaution. Uh, a story I don't want to get into too much due to time was that wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. Megyn Kelly schools a triggered Dan Abrams on his own show during an explosive debate over Trump guilty verdict. Colin Linebarger reports the liberal news nation anchor Dan Abrams got completely owned by former Fox News host Megyn Kelly while debating her on the disgraceful Trump guilty verdict Thursday night. As the Gateway Pundit reported, the rigged New York City jury convicted President Trump on all 34 counts. Agedi Mershon saluted the jury members for their work, dedication, and hard work. It goes on to say here that Abrams invited Kelly onto his show to allow her to weigh in. The conversation soon blew up in Abrams' face when he decided to assert that Trump was guilty of wrongdoing. And she says that's not even illegal, and it isn't. Another story that we have from Colin Linebarger is watch as NBC attempts to uh, you know, make a caricature of Trump supporters as deranged maniacs, and it actually ends up backfiring. I'm going to go down to the video here. Uh, you actually can watch it on the website. We won't watch it today because it's a little long for our timing. But NBC News went on the air on Thursday to cover President Trump's disgraceful conviction by a kangaroo New York City court on bogus crimes. 
They attempted to take a subtle shot at Trump supporters in the process, but it ended up backfiring on them. As the Media Research Center reported Friday that NBC reporter Laura Jarrett was on air breaking down her analysis of the disgusting verdict when the network's cameras cut to a hysterical Trump fan in the middle of her report who was screaming like a deranged lunatic while holding a free Father Teresa sign. There was just one problem for the network, though. The man in the video who MRC identified as Tony Barbieri is an actor who occasionally performs for far left ABC late night Jimmy host, uh, late night host Jimmy Fall- Jimmy Kimmel. On a show, Jimmy Kimmel Live, he calls himself Jake Bird and travels across America acting like crazed right winger for Kimmel fans. Well, of course, they're going to use an actor and they're going to get crossed in their dissemination to try to make us seem insane. We're not insane. These people are rigging our elections. They're rigging our courts. They're, they're, They're creating a lawfare society. These people need to be put in prison. I agree with Laura Loomer. Our last story is about somebody who's a turtle, literally a dinosaur. Mitch McConnell responds to Trump conviction by kangaroo New York court, then gets dunked on by conservative social media users. Here's what it has to say. Disgraced Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell weighed in on the chilling conviction of President Trump for allegedly falsifying business documents and received a blistering response from conservatives on social media. As the Gateway Pundit reported, the rigged New York City jury convicted Trump on all 34 counts in Alvin Bragg and corrupt Judge Juan Mershon's lawfare case Thursday afternoon. Uh, It goes on to say down here that McConnell issued a pathetically canned response later that night with no emotion or outrage over the violation of Trump's sacred constitutional rights, saying directly here, these charges never should have been brought in the first place, he wrote. I expect the conviction to be overturned on appeal. And that's it. What a shame from these leaders. Where's the outrage? Where's the vitriol? Where is the vivacious anger showing people that you will not tolerate this? You will not take this. Damn it, we will go down with the ship. You're supposed to be our leader. Of course, we expect nothing less from the conservative establishment. That's why we need change and we need Trump back in office. I'm Elijah Schaefer. Thank you for watching the Gateway Pundits Weekend Review. Have a great rest of the week. As always, may God bless the United States of America. I'm signing out.